Okay, I think it's official. Winter is bearing its ugly teeth and I'm feeling every bit of it this morning. It's a high of 31 right now. I know that's not that cold. I grew up in the Midwest, spent most of my life in Illinois. This is nothing, but it just kind of caught me off guard. I also think too, there's a lot of moisture in the air and it's, it's getting to my soft little baby chance. But anyway, rather than staying inside and, and being a Weenie Hut Junior and watching some Netflix and drinking hot cocoa, I figured we'd go out and do some manly shit. We're gonna go fishing. Not only are we gonna go on a fishing mission though, we're going on a backwoods canoe fishing mission. I wanna film a dedicated video towards this new purchase of mine. For now, we're just gonna break in. I've been itching to go to this one particular lake that I've known about for almost two years now. And supposedly it's got giant bass in it. Um, it was recommended to me by my real estate agent who helped me buy Camp Claw. We were actually looking at some land on this pond. Uh, just ended up not working out. I wanted an actual cabin opposed to land. But one thing he did express is that there's some absolute biggins in this little backwater bog. And the only way you can fish there is with a watercraft like this. More specifically, a freaking canoe. This right here is a 16 foot Discovery by Old Town. Old Town actually, if you guys are familiar with the canoe company, they're based out of Maine, just not too far from Bangor. Um, but for whatever reason, their factory shut down, so you can't go buy one there. So I thought I'd save some money. I went on Facebook Marketplace last night, found this for an absolute steal in my opinion. The guy that sold it to me said he's caught a lot of fish out of this thing. So I think it's coming with some good juju. But one thing he didn't mention is that he only trout and salmon fishes. So I think we might be the first person to ever catch a bass out of this canoe. It's used, it's got some wear and tear on it, but what matters to me is that it's got character and I, I believe it has a whole lot of that. So I'm gonna go in the truck, warm up a bit, and uh, we're gonna head on the way. We've got about an hour drive to this spot. Fingers crossed, stick with, stay tuned, and let's go have a freaking day. <laughs> quite the spot. This is something you'd see on the front of a postcard. It is magical back here. Not to sound over the top, but it is really beautiful. Just drop the canoe off. Excited to break this thing in. Again, this is maiden voyage. First time ever fishing off this canoe. It's probably been years since I, I caught a fish from a canoe, so I'm pretty excited about this one. Here's what we're packing, just to give you an idea as to how I like to set up my gear. Bringing four rods with me, three casting, one spinning, two reaction rods. So I've got a, a jerk bait rod right there. We've got a 6'9 Twitch Guggen Green. We've got a 6'10 Finesse Guggen Gold. 7'2 Reaction Guggen Green. And then we've got a 7'5 Guggen Gold Heavy. I don't know if we're gonna catch fish today. I don't even know how many bass are in here. This is a complete word of mouth scenario. I drove past here in the winter time when there was about two feet of ice on this little spot. And my real estate agent pointed to the pond. I was like, hey, I caught my biggest bass out of here. You should try it sometime. Fast forward to two years later. Uh, practically living up here and we're finally going to get a chance to fish it. It's very small. This is a really cool backwoods bog. It reminds me of some of the stuff I used to fish in college. I don't know. I'm just really jittery. I'm really stoked. I'm very pumped. I'm going to shut up now. Let's get the canoe in the water and go crank on some fish. All right, we're doing this. I'm so excited. I'm breaking all these new tools in. New kayak. I got this new battery holder. It's got a big lithium in here, so we should have plenty of run time today. Also got this really sick little mount that's rated for like a three horse. Found it on actually Old Town's website. Gonna test it out today, see how it does. Definitely defeats the purpose of actually being in a canoe, but it's just nice to have a shore motor on the boat. Rods are in. Last thing we have is the tackle. Also, I want to mention too, if you guys are getting stocked up on tackle, maybe for the next season, or if you're doing a lot of winter fall fishing, definitely go on guggensquad.com right now. I'll leave the link down below. We're having a ton of sales. And also do not forget to use the code right here, John B, to save 10% off your entire order. Just something good to know if you're looking to uh, get some gear for next season or this season, or getting ready to buy some good Christmas gifts. So anyway, John B code, 10% off all Guggen stuff on the website. That aside, let's do this. We're going in. Maiden voyage of the Camp Claw Canoe. Going in. Oh, that's not good. Got a bit of leaning on the right side. I think we're Gucci. Let's do this. I'm excited. What should I start off with? Maybe a little crank, maybe a jerk. Let's try a jerk bait out. 
Ripper on a York bait for a bit. First cast, going in. This time, ooh, some grass out there. Ooh, heaps of grass out there. It's just now starting to get really cold here in Maine. Like I said, it was 31 degrees this morning. So a lot of these smaller ponds tend to cool down faster. They're usually the warmer ones in the springtime and the colder in the winter months, but they can still be good fishing, especially if you find a nice little hidden ditch like this. Ooh, heaps of grass out there. I might have to switch like a lipless crank or something. Okay, well, it's apparent that I'm already having to switch up. <laughs> Jerkbait's awesome for different scenarios, but not this scenario today. I had no idea how deep this pond is. There's like no information on this. Usually a lot of lakes and ponds, even the small ones like this, have a pretty good write-up on Maine's website, but this one in particular doesn't have a whole lot of info. Let's see, what should we do? I'll throw a little bandito bug on a T-rig on a trig. Throw a little bandito bug in one of my new favorite colors, Alabama craw. Throw an Alabama craw in Maine. I like it. I like it a whole lot. Do a little bit of tea rigging. I just want to know how deep this is. I feel like this whole pond's pretty shallow. I'm gonna try sticking it up. Let's see how that works. I'm gonna try not to eat. This is so freaking cool. I love spots like this. It's so quiet back here. There's hardly any camps in this area. There's like virtually none on the bank that I can see. Rip the jerk around so I can find something. Let's see if they want the jerk bait. I have one. <laughs> First fish of the day. Okay, that's that's good to know. There's bass in here willing to eat. <laughs> Not the one I thought I'd catch, but nice little fish regardless. Look at that little dude. <laughs> Thank you, little guy. That's cool. Nice little fish. First one. Main LM Bizzle. It's a good sign. There's fish in here willing to eat. That's all I wanted to know. I was actually going for another cast. I was reeling up and he just crushed it. I'm like, that doesn't feel like grass. Let's try something different. Fish on the bottom for a bit. See if there's anything out there willing and ready to eat a craw. I'm just curious how deep it is. Just know how deep it is out there. If I had to guess, it's probably no deeper than like 10 foot. Still dropping, still dropping, still, wow. Wow. It's a lot deeper than I thought. Oh, I have a fish on right now. Is that a fish? Oh yeah, it is. Got him. First cast with the bug. Out in the middle of nowhere. And we're on. Little guy. <laughs> That's cool. Just let that thing drop all the way to the bottom. This guy came up and crushed it. Beautiful. Gotta love it. Main pond, main backwoods bassin. <laughs> Thank you, dude. Wow, that was like first cast. Like I moved it once and he was already on. That was wicked. Literally first cast on the guy. That was ridiculous. I like twitched it once and boom, he was on. I thought it was actually a decent one, the way he ate it. I'm gonna try a little flight jig. Maybe that'll get them fired up. It's usually a good bait to throw in places like this. Or a lipless, I don't know. Either or. Let's throw a little plate jig. Throw a little saucy swimmer on the back. Oh yes. This is the color too. Sexy, sexy shimmer 3.3. Such a good spinner bait. Bladed jig, swim jig trailer. It's got some scent, it's got some kick, it's got some vibration, and it's got some color. It did just get tapped up in the shallow, so I'm gonna take a few casts right up towards the bank. See if maybe that's where they're hiding. Just because it's cold doesn't mean they're gonna be deep always. Sometimes they'll go shallow all the way up before the ice freezes, and sometimes they'll go shallow when there's still ice in the pond. It just all depends on if they're feeding or you know what they're trying to do. Bass are confusing. Oh, I just got hit. That felt weird, I swear to God, I just got a bottle. That felt strange. Oh, 
Oh, is that a fish? I don't know. I don't know if I'm getting short struck right now or just don't know how to use a lure. There's one. That's a fish. Oh, he just came off. What the? I'm getting throttled over here. Try over there real quick. Those were definitely fish. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, what the f was that? I just had one. Way up shallow. Is that a fish? Yeah, I have one. Fish or grass? That's grass. No, it's a fish. A little bizzle on the bladed jig. Oh, they're biting kind of sloppy. It felt like grass at first. <laughs> That's cool, dude. That guy was shallow. He's probably in like two, three feet of water. Oh, hammered it though. That's a good sign. It's a weird bite, but he at least hammered it. Choked it all the way down. Thank you, bud. We're slowly figuring something out here. Really, I'm just trying to de decipher whether they're shallow, deep, if they went fast or slow. That's my second bite on a moving bait, so. I'm gonna keep throwing this. I guess second fish on the moving bait. I had a couple other bites earlier. Gotta find those big ones though. Suppose there's big fish in here. Suppose there's really big fish, especially for Maine. Or even, not even for Maine, just big fish in general. Like sixes and sevens. Apparently, apparently. <laughs> I've been led astray before though. Been on many wild goose chases. Oh my gosh, I've been on many of those where folks are like, yeah, you gotta go here. It's amazing fishing. Fish every cast and you go and it's like, why am I fit? Like, I might as well be casting in the Sahara Desert. I'm sure you guys have experienced that same scenario before where someone tells you it's the juice, go hit it up. And then you come back and you're like, oh, maybe it should have been here a week ago. It was way better then. Or maybe you just weren't throwing the right color. Got another one. Yeah, got another one. Yeah, yes sir, dinkies, but I'll take it. <laughs> oh, I love their colors they get this time of year. Another one on the bladed jig and saucy swimmer. What's happening, little dude? Thank you for playing. Where are your brothers at though? Where are you, where's your big bro at? Where's grandmama? Where your grandmama live? I will say I'm loving the, the canoe, the new canoe. The claw canoe, this thing is sweet. It's a bit tipsy, but all of them pretty much are. Doesn't matter if you've got a big one or a small one. This is a 16 footer. 16 foot? Yeah, this is a 16 footer. Damn, that's crazy. This is a 16 foot. This is as big as my first boat. Or it's as long as my first boat. That's hard to believe. I guess nose to nose, yeah. That's weird. My first boat was a 16.75, I think. It's the old slow. I like it though, it's sick. This would be really cool for like backwoods camping missions trout missions, small pond missions like we're doing today. I just needed a canoe. I think if you get a, a cabin in Maine or a cabin anywhere in the Northwoods, it's mandatory to own at least one canoe that you can do stuff like this. Sometimes these, these little canoes are eons better than a big boat. And this is coming from a guy who owns several big boats. And this is coming from a guy who owns a big boat too. So it's like, you know, I, I can speak on both terms. What am I trying to say? What I'm trying to tell you guys is I like canoes. They're awesome. Cause you can do stuff like this. You can never put a boat here. You can never bank fish here, but you can't canoe here. Ugh! Big cast. Same size, he felt maybe a little bit bigger there. Had me fooled. Just another wee bass. Just a wee little fish. Bye bye. I must be fired up because that's the second bite I've had on just the fall. I haven't even picked up my lure yet. Is that another one? Yeah, it is. That feels a little bit better. That feels a little bit better. No, not really. God, they just know how to pull. They know how to use their weight in here. God, this is a 7.5 rod and they are fully torquing it over. 
Good Lord. I mean, he's a bit bigger, to be fair. <laughs> Decent little main largy. <laughs> this is so funny. I swear to God, I swear to God, someone told me there's giant fish in here. I, I'm not lying to you. <laughs> oh, that's so freaking hilarious though. Never should have used the two words, big and fish. Thank you, dude. Not that we don't appreciate the little guys, it's just kind of ironic. It's kind of ironic. Oh, yep, there's one. Oh, he just dropped it. He's got it. Oh my God, oh, no, there he is. I was gonna say that's a big fish, but it's not. <laughs> it's just a little guy. Heavens almighty. Heaven almighty. <sighs> what the hell? What the hell is this? There's a little bit better one. Wow, he was way up shallow. That's a much better fish. Oh my gosh, that fish was in an inch of water. <laughs> That's like summer bassin right there. Oh my God, dude. Well, he flipped in there and boom, he crushed it. Huh. So weird, man. Early winter, late fall fishing can be like that where they're just still pretty shallow. I'm gonna get him back in the water. Thank you, dude. Damn, dude, that was crazy. He freaking pummeled me. I was like, well, that, no, that's a fish. As Soon as it hit the water, I was on. Standing timber over here, which is very odd for a pond or a lake in Maine. I feel like I'm back in Texas, honestly. There we go, little guy. Way up shallow, holy moly, that fish is shallow, shallow. Decent little largey. In the dirt, in the mud. Nice. Thank you, buddy. Plus it hammered it. Endless, endless squeaks. <laughs> God, what the frick? What the frick? They're everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. It's a bass. <laughs> Dude, this is getting out of hand. My first bass ever. I think my first bass ever. I think my first bass ever was like 10 times all these little guys' sizes. And he wasn't even that big. Okay, bye. <sighs> I don't want anybody else. Well, then, oh, there's one. He just nibbled it. Do you have it? You might have it. Yeah, he's got it. What's up, little Jimbo? I'll tell you what, man, these fish do pull initially. Like, setting the hook is fun on them. But after that, they just, <laughs> just spiral up to the surface. Another one has actually switched over to a, um, thick jig, 3 8 ounce thick jig with the bandito bug, just to give it a bit more bulk. And uh, I don't know, just changing things up here. Definitely have not figured these fish out to a hole. I can catch the piss out of little ones, just the big ones seem to be eluding me. And I'm very certain that there's some bigger fish in here, even despite what I've been told. These fish seem really healthy. I know there's a lot of small ones in here, but that one I caught in that backside, flipping in like literal mud water, like an inch, that was a decent fish. So definitely think where there's a couple one and two pounders, there's surely a couple threes and fours right around the corner. There just may not be a whole lot. That might be the issue. It's weird, I'm getting bit kind of everywhere right now. Like I'm getting bit in a foot or less of water with both types of lures, fast moving and slow moving. But then I'm occasionally launching some in the depths, maybe where it's like anywhere from eight to 12. And I'm also getting bit out there, so it's like, 
Is there a pat? Do I know what I'm doing right now? I'm just kind of junk fishing at the moment. Nothing wrong with that. It's just, I like to figure out exactly what's going to turn these bass on. And furthermore, where the pigs live, where are the giants? Where are the supposed six and seven pounders? That's honestly pretty ignorant. I know I'm complaining and I sound so ignorant right now, pleading for a six, seven pound main largemouth. But it's lakes like this, I just, I know magical stuff can happen. Even if you get one decent one today, I don't mind catching a hundred little squeaks and then that one last bite is like a five pounder. Like that would be sweet, honestly. No complaints there at all. I'm a, I'm a one bite kind of guy. If it means I can get one big bite today, that's cool with me. I, I just wanna, I just want some love from a big mouth bass. Decent sized mouth bass, <laughs> medium sized mouth bass. I wish there was a species of bass that was just called medium sized mouth. Cause we've got large, we got small. There should be a medium. There's definitely a strain of bass that's got a mouth that's in between a small and large mouth. And I'm gonna petition to call that fish the medium mouth bass. Who's with me? I think it's a great idea. It's just a perfect example of stupid shit I think of when I'm on a canoe all by myself in the middle of the woods. <laughs> Oh God, if I can't talk to anyone, I'm just gonna talk to myself or just talk to you guys, you know, that also works. Oh, they're not really here. Right now I'm just talking to a camera. Probably look like a lunatic, honestly. I'm gonna flip some pads. <laughs> not what you'd wanna be doing in early winter, late fall, but that's what they are. So we're gonna fish. Oh, is that a fish or am I just, oh no, that is a fish. Little guy in the pads. That was an awful hook set, but we got it done. Fun. What's up, buddy? What's up, dude? Let's crack a lacking. You like the pads too? Nice. That was fun. Me and that little bass just shared a nice moment. Nice sentimental moment. Good conversation. I'm gonna try a little lipless. See if maybe that'll get him going. Oh, there we go, on the crank, on the lipless, that's fun. Can't beat a good lipless bite. Fighting pretty good for a little dude. That's fun. Man, they're eating just about anything today. Play a jig, lipless, caught one of the jerk bait, jig, bandito bug. If only they were just a little bit bigger. Hey buddy, thank you for biting. I do appreciate that. Out here in the great Northwoods, Maine, doing a little backwoods bassing. Just broke in the new canoe. Mission success, caught uh, an absolute ton of fish. But I want to post a quick Instagram story thanking all of you guys for watching my last video. I know it's been weird. I've not been uploading much. Um, I've had a lot going on as has everyone else, to be honest. But I just wanna say thank you. I had a ton of really heartfelt, genuine comments on that one, and it definitely made my night. It's still making my day. But I just wanna broadly thank everyone who watched that video and dropped the comment and gave it a thumbs up. That was huge, definitely needed that. But now we're back out here filming some more videos. Uh, I have a new camera dude, his name's Caleb. He's flying in today. So we're gonna hopefully get active for the rest of November and crank out some main videos. I have a ton of stuff filmed, I just have not been posting, so. Just uh, please be patient and thank you for being patient. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna get back to it. Look at this. Oh, looks so sexy back here. Oh, there's one. Got him. Right behind that current. That was sick. That was dope. Hell yeah. Giants. Biggins. Nothing but toads out here in Maine, baby. Ooh. I think this is a sign that I should probably start chasing after some trout up here. <laughs> it's It's been a fun day, no doubt. You can't complain when you're setting the hook, but um, wow, these guys are small. Like really freaking small. We're end of the day where we started. I'm making a couple casts of this uh, outflow right here. Just caught that one right behind some brush. After that, gonna head off the water and go pick up Caleb. I'm not sure if you guys have met Caleb before, maybe in a previous video, but he's gonna be basically like my full-time videographer. He's gonna help me create some really awesome content. I went solo there for about six, seven months. You guys saw how that went. 
I'm all about filming. I love editing, but it's, it's tough because I want to film like three days in a row, four days in a row, and it's tough to do that when I get home at like 6 p.m. and all I want to do is eat and sleep and go to bed and get ready for the next day, in which I've got to wake up at like four. So yeah, he's gonna help me out for the rest of 2021 and 2022, but he flies in and we're gonna film some heaters over the next couple of days up here in the great north woods of Maine. Oh, coming in hot, no jokes. Didn't really figure out the whole aiming thing yet with this trolling motor. Well, wieners, we did it. The maiden voyage of the brand new canoe has finally commenced. We caught some good fish, got some slime on the deck. I seriously think this is the first time this thing has ever seen bass, just because the previous owner was so adamant on only chasing after trout and salmon, which I can respect, that's cool. And we're gonna do a lot of trout and salmon and togue fishing off of this very canoe as well. There's actually a couple of trips I have planned. I'm just waiting for the right weather. Today was awesome. It was a lot of fun. Kind of made me feel like a kid again, fishing out of a canoe. My grandfather had an old town and I used to take it out all the time on Lake Gex and catch little bluegill and perch. And I don't know, it's just weird hopping back into a vessel that you fish with as a kid and you kind of get those memories flooding over you. Before I get too sentimental, I'm gonna fit for all the beautiful wieners out there. If you're curious as to what we caught them on today, which by the way was a lot, I'll leave it linked down below. So you guys can pick some of that gear up yourself. Again, don't forget to use the code John B. Uh, to save 10% off your entire Guggen Squad order. But I'm peacing out, signing out. Thank you guys for joining me on this amazing Backwoods Bass and Mission. I'll catch you guys in the next one. As always, folks, keep fishing. Never stop. <laughs>